World War I saw the introduction of new military technology, never before used on the battlefield, which resulted in unprecedented quantities of death. The Western Front, between France, Belgium, and Germany, was defined by slow-moving front lines, where every mile of ground cost thousands of casualties in an assault. But this static type of warfare wasn't always present in the West. During the initial weeks of the war, battles and troop movements were fast-paced, with Germany and France eager to launch attacks against each other. In 1914, the Germans launched the Schlieffen Plan, an offensive through Belgium into France. At the same time, the French executed their plan, Plan 17. Prior to the development of Plan 17, Plans 15 and 16, created in 1906 and 1909 respectively, called for the deployment of French troops along the Belgian frontier. They anticipated German attacks through Belgium and into northern France. From the 1890s to the 1910s, the general strategy was to initially take a defensive stance to slow the German armies down and then counterattack once the Germans had exhausted their resources. In 1911, Joseph Joffrey was appointed as the supreme commander of the French army. The French High Command developed Plan 17 in 1913. His plan for a potential war with Germany was unprecedented in that it called for an immediate major offensive. Joffrey figured that over time, Germany would be able to mobilize a large army quicker than France, so he needed to execute a decisive military defeat upon the Germans before they gathered their strength. Joffrey also had the delusional belief that the ordinary French soldier's will to fight was so supreme that it could overcome any military obstacle. Plan 17 involved a large concentration of French troops on the German frontier and only a small force on the southeastern Belgian border. France was very bitter about losing the region of Alsace-Lorraine after the Franco-Prussian War in 1871, and Joffrey prioritized an attack there. His armies would advance through Alsace-Lorraine and into the highly industrialized Ruhr Valley. The 5th Army, of 240,000 men, would form up between Verdun and the Belgian frontier with a cavalry corps to its west. It would either attack alongside the 3rd Army, or, in the event of a German invasion of Belgium, advance northwards to strike the German southern flank. Above all, Joffrey desired to go through Belgium and into Germany to bypass German fortifications in Alsace-Lorraine, but he knew that Britain would come to Belgium's aid. So, French troops would only meet German forces in Belgium if Germany had attacked them first. The French command hoped British and Belgian units would defend northern France while Joffrey's army struck the Germans to the south. The French attack also planned to draw German forces away from France's ally, Russia. General Charles Lanrezac, appointed by Joffrey to command the French 5th Army around Sedan, and General Pierre Ruffy of the 3rd Army, strongly opposed Joffrey's plans for a French offensive. They anticipated that the size of a German army attacking through southern Belgium would be too large to push back. Joffrey did not anticipate the fact that 80% of the German army would be present in Belgium and France in 1914. Lanrezac expressed concerns that northern France was inadequately defended, but Joffrey dismissed the worries. The French could not consider integrating their reservists with professional frontline units, and they deemed it a radical idea. They did not want the quality of professional troops being degraded by the integration of reservists. Joffrey critically discounted the possibility of German reservists participating in the attack. Joffrey believed that the stronger the German army in Belgium was, the weaker it would be in Alsace-Lorraine. In reality, the presence of German reservists on the front line meant that the German military was not deficient in any region. He planned a two-pronged attack around Metz and into Lorraine, despite acknowledging the extensive fortifications and German presence in the region. An assault into Alsace would be extremely difficult due to the mountainous terrain. World War I began on July 28, 1914, after Europe failed to resolve the July Crisis following the assassination of Franz Ferdinand. Germany declared war on France on August 3rd, and the former invaded Belgium the following day. 
The invasion prompted Brussels to request military assistance from Britain and France. Joffrey launched Plan 17 on August 7th in the Alsace region, initiating what is known as the Battle of the Frontiers. He advocated for a doctrine of offensive spirit. The First Army, making up 45,000 Frenchmen, advanced 35 kilometers into Alsace, capturing multiple border towns and taking Mulhaus with little resistance. France captured the small town of Altkirch with a bayonet charge that left a hundred of their men dead. On August 9th, the Germans reversed the French progress with their counterattack. The French commander there, General Louis Benou, withdrew to France on August 10th. Joffrey dismissed Benou because of a lack of aggressiveness during the operation. General Paul Pau was put in charge of the newly organized Army of Alsace and quickly planned a second assault on Mulhaus. He executed the assault on August 14th. The outskirts of Mulhaus were reached on the 18th, and house-to-house -house fighting ensued. A day later, Mulhaus was firmly in French hands. The civilians of Mulhaus celebrated wildly once the French arrived. When the Germans recaptured the city, they punished those who expressed support for the French. The French captured 3,000 German prisoners and 24 artillery pieces. The French planned to continue the advance to the northwest, but these plans were cancelled on the 23rd after hearing of French defeats elsewhere on the front. The French withdrew 20 kilometers from Mulhouse on the 26th back to the town of Tan. For the duration of the war, Tan, roughly 22 kilometers east of the French frontier, would remain in French hands. By the day, the German forces in Belgium were becoming more and more threatening as they moved to outflank the French. Joffrey was still invested in an attack in Alsace-Lorraine and refused to give up momentum there. He was unconcerned about a potential German breakthrough into northern France. Joffrey reinforced the 5th Army to reassure General Lanerzac, for he was uneasy. By the 15th, Joffrey had realized the danger of the German troops in Belgium. Belgium warned that if French troops did not support Belgium, their infantry would be forced to retreat to Antwerp. This prompted Joffrey to order Lanerzac's 5th Army to move to the western side of the Meuse River to meet German forces in Belgium around the city of Dinant. Meanwhile, on the 14th, the French attempted to recapture Lorraine. The French infantry marched 10 kilometers towards Sarborg and Morhang. The Germans heavily defended the area. Entrenched German positions, supported by machine guns and artillery, bloodied the French infantry, who charged across open fields. The bright red and blue French uniforms made them easy to spot. On the 19th, the French reached Sarborg. Joffrey ordered the French forces to split, with some now marching towards Morhang. They failed to reach the town, and the Germans launched a counterattack on the 20th. On the 22nd, the Germans crossed into France. Two days later, the Germans launched another major attack to achieve a breakthrough. The French 2nd Army thwarted the German assault and saved the other French forces from encirclement. By the beginning of September, trench warfare became the mode of combat in Lorraine. Simultaneously, the Battle of Charleroi was beginning to unfold. Until the 19th, the furthest northern deployment of French forces had been to southwestern Belgium. On the 20th, Lanerzac convinced Joffrey to move his 5th Army north in anticipation of a German breakthrough in western Belgium. Joffrey planned to have Lanerzac's 5th Army of 15 divisions attack across the river Sambre on a 40-kilometer front from the industrial town of Charleroi to the fortress town of Namur to strike the German flank. The French force in the area was already reduced because some divisions had been relocated to participate in the ongoing Battle of the Ardennes. Joffrey's attack was doomed to fail. The Germans had 38 divisions in the area, an amount double that which Joffrey had estimated. The Germans surprised the French by launching an offensive of their own on the 21st. By the 23rd, Lanerzac had withdrawn from Charleroi and Amur. The French center, around Charleroi, fell back the furthest and suffered the heaviest casualties. Lanerzac justified the withdrawal by citing concerns about being outflanked after the Germans crossed the Meuse River to his southeast. 
also contributing to his decision to withdraw was the French defeat in the Battle of the Ardennes. Lanrezac had withdrawn 55 kilometers to the south by the 24th. Joffrey fired him for his lack of offensive spirit, but Lanrezac's decision saved the French army from being outflanked. Further south, Joffrey ordered the 3rd and 4th armies on an offensive into the Ardennes, a hilly and wooded region in southern Belgium, on August 21st. He did this despite realizing the sizable German force in the area and the failure of French troops to break through in Lorraine. Facing them was the German center, a sound force in the midst of executing the Schlieffen plan. On the 21st, the heavy fog made it difficult to conduct proper reconnaissance and the French did not realize how heavily outnumbered they were. Little fighting occurred on the first day of the attack. Like in other French attacks early in the war, they used massive infantry charges against enemy machine guns, resulting in heavy casualties. By the end of the 23rd, the French retreated in disarray. Only a delaying action made by the 4th Army on the 26th prevented its annihilation. In only three days of fighting, the French counted 42,557 casualties. The Germans took 14,940 casualties, nearly three times less than the French. By the middle of September, trench warfare had set in on the Western Front and Plan 17 had been a failure. Between August 6th and September 5th, the French took 329,000 casualties. The Germans sustained 310,000. Joffrey is considered a hero due to his unfaltering confidence in his troops and his success in ebbing the Schlieffen plan at the First Battle of the Marne in mid-September. Still, his obstinate advocacy for launching the Plan 17 offensive across the frontiers must be recognized, which led to unnecessary casualties. Joffrey's irrational decision of ordering his generals to launch multiple unsuccessful attacks gave him the excuse he needed to dismiss General Lanerzak, whom he held personal grudges against above all else. Joffrey's concentration of his forces at Alsace-Lorraine played right into the German hands because northern France and Paris were much more vulnerable. Some French troops fighting on the German border had to redeploy north to thwart the enemy's breakthrough. This resulted in a weaker force on the frontier and thus a reduced chance of a successful French offensive. Plan 17 also failed due to outdated tactics. Infantry conducted charges across open terrain against fortified German positions. The French vastly underestimated the size of the German forces, and Joffrey believed that the will of the French soldiers had to fight would make them unstoppable. The French were perhaps too confident in the quality of their forces, convinced that they could continuously push the Germans back. This precedent resulted in the French armies being unprepared to conduct a proper defense. German reservists were intermixed with frontline troops, while the French refused to use theirs when they attacked, contributing to their unsuccessful operations. A lack of coordination between units set up the French for failure. At times, Joffrey deliberately separated his attacking forces in a vain attempt to achieve a more meaningful breakthrough. It highlighted the cost and blood of going on the offensive, making commanders realize the benefits of defense for the next years of the war.